Shag Heads. Welcome to another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. Curtis Tucker here, your podcast host, and another episode of behind the scenes of what's going on at Shaggy Duck Studios. Really not a whole lot of major stuff going on right now. Still trying to get everything in order, but I wanted just to talk a little bit about my infatuation and love of the 1970s which is leading me to go ahead and try to write a book. Now, I know nothing about writing a book, and so this is going to be quite an adventure. I will uh, do blog posts, and we'll have more uh, podcast episodes on my journey to write this book. And so I'm going to explain a little bit about why write a book and and all of that stuff. But uh, let's talk about me and the 1970s real quick. Um, Get some other stuff out of the way. Uh, Don't forget, if you're just listening to this on uh, your favorite podcasting app, you can also go to Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube and you can watch the video over there uh, of this episode. Or if you're watching this on YouTube and you just don't have enough time to watch and you just want to listen to it in your car, you can uh, go to your favorite podcasting app and just download and subscribe to A Shaggy Duck Life. So check that out if you guys want to send me a question or some information. That is curtis at shaggyduck.com. I'd love to hear from you. So uh, so this week's episode, uh, all about the 1970s and why I loved it so much. So I was born in 1962 and uh, to a Air Force uh, airman. And my mom uh, came from Enid, Oklahoma. And because he was an airman, they were immediately transferred out of Enid, Oklahoma. And so I spent basically 62 to 69 traveling around, lived in Turkey for several years. And then some. Uh, I was born in San Antonio. So some of those bases finally ended up back in Oklahoma at Burns Flat, Oklahoma in uh, Clinton Sherman Air Force Base. Uh, back in the late 60s. And then, unfortunately, my parents divorced and my mom moved me and my sister back to her hometown of Enid, Oklahoma around 1969. So I basically grew up in Enid throughout the entire 70s from 1970 to 1979. And so living here in Enid, Oklahoma, and that's where the Shaggy Duck Studio is uh, today, but living here in Enid... I, uh, of course, had a single parent, and she worked full-time job and then also worked uh, a lot of second jobs just to make sure we had enough money and had everything that we needed. So there was a lot of uh, time with just me and my sister, and I guess we were called what you would, uh, what they dubbed back then latchkey kids, meaning we stayed home by ourselves. And what the, the, I guess, kind of the cool thing for my mom was she moved us to a rent house right across the street from my great grandma. So my great grandma lived right across the street. And this was like the early part of the seventies when we, we were young enough that we probably needed somebody to watch us. But, um, so my great grandma would kind of watch us through her window from across the street. Now she never learned to drive, never had a car, Uh, So she couldn't like take us anywhere or anything like that, but she kind of kept an eye on us. If she thought uh, we were up to no good, which we usually were, we were sneaking kids in the back door all the time. They'd go down the alley and then come in the back door. And if she would see some activity in some of the windows, she would start heading across the street while being older. um, You know, we would keep a lookout for her. And then we, when we would see her crossing the street, all of the other kids would hide in closets and under beds, or they would just run out the back door and down the alley and wait till she was gone. So that went on for a while, but that gave us some freedom. And then we eventually moved down the street to a two-story house uh, at the corner of uh, Broadway and Johnson in Enid, Oklahoma. And it was another rent house. My mom, uh, basically the entire time I grew up, I only lived in rent houses. My mom had never purchased a house. She did not purchase her first house until after me and my sister were gone and went off to college. So so we lived in a two-story house. Fortunately, I got the upstairs, which basically meant I had the entire upstairs of that house to myself. And so you would go up the stairs 
and the first big room was a kind of a playroom, had a ping pong table up there, a mini pool table, all kinds of fun stuff. And then on the off to the side of it was a bathroom, and then through a door was my bedroom, and then through another door was a really large walk-in closet with kind of low low ceilings, but uh, so that whole area upstairs was my universe uh, in the 1970s. And so basically, I, I'm going to concentrate, uh, you know, this podcast episode and the book. Uh, I think I finally decided the book is going to be centered more around 1977. And so I'm not exactly sure the exact year that we moved from South Johnson to West Broadway, but it literally was, let's see, one, two, three, four, just four blocks um, to the north of where we live. But I was I had a little more freedom by the time we moved to the West Broadway house because I was a little bit older. And the school that we went to was exactly one block away. And so uh, up until sixth grade and then uh, at seventh grade, we uh, tra- you know we moved on to what we call junior high. Now that was several blocks away, but a lot of the time uh, we either walked to school or we got a ride to school and then walked home, uh, things like that. But anyway, so living on West Broadway in 1970 w- was was one of the coolest things. And I'm going to say it was probably uh, probably 74, 75. Um, until, you know, maybe 78, 79. And then we moved to another house, which was, again, only a few blocks away. And uh, by that time, we were older. Uh, I was in high school and then eventually had a car. But so the the fun period was kind of right there in the middle where I was uh, my last year of elementary school going into junior high. And that's what the book is going to be centered around is that summer uh, that's kind of between or maybe it might be a little bit later. I haven't quite figured out all the logistics, but basically it's going to be the transition from, I think going from kind of a grade school mentality to a kind of a junior high, middle school, almost high school mentality. And so uh, I kind of want to capture that last year when you're a kid in the 70s, that kind of that last year that you thought you could get away with riding a banana seat bike uh, and then like the next year, you either needed to move to 10 speeds or just started walking everywhere and uh, you just didn't ride your... Uh... So for us, we had our last year of the banana seat bikes. Um, we did not get rid of our banana seat bikes, uh, but the Huffy BMX type bikes had become really popular. And so you were kind of more uh, a cool kid if you rode one of those bikes. So what we did was we stripped our banana seat bikes down uh, took the banana seats off, the handlebars, the um, f- fenders, and basically at one point we took everything off and spray painted them all black and then put huffy seats, uh, huffy handlebars, huffy uh, pedals, and knobby tires and basically uh, transformed them from banana seat bikes into BMX-looking uh, racing bikes. So this... Um, so my favorite time of the 70s is right there in that transition going from banana seat bikes to, I, I think, probably 10 speeds. Uh, we rode Huffy bikes for just a little while, but it was just that last year knowing that this was the last year we're going to be able to act like geeks and and be really goofy and not have to worry about girls, trying to impress girls and and just fun. And so my, my best friend, who's my best friend still today, uh, State and Petty John, he moved to Enid at the beginning of my sixth grade year. And so um, so we had these great summers where uh, about five of us lived on West Broadway. Now I lived, I was the furthest away uh, on the West End. And then on the, on the East End of the neighborhood, there was a big uh, highway and then um, Jason, Jason, David, and Brendan, all three kind of lived within a block of each other. Staten was in the middle, and then I was all the way down at the other end on the west end, but we all lived on West Broadway. And so we would spend our summers together thinking of games and playing a game we called Musclins, which was kind of a, 
uh, outdoor game. It was a combination of hide and seek, kick the can, tag, and all of those kind of melded together. Somebody in the neighborhood had made it up. And uh, I mean, we played it religiously for hours and hours and hours. And it was one of those times where, you know, your parents kind of figured that's where you were. You didn't have to go home for dinner. You didn't want to go home for dinner because you didn't want to leave the game. And so, so the, the summer after sixth grade, we played it. The summer after seventh grade, we played it. And so I, I think, I think the story of the banana seat squad is going to happen that, that year after eighth grade. So basically a lot of schools, by the time you hit ninth grade, you're a freshman in high school. Whereas in Enid, they hadn't moved the freshmen to the high school yet. Now they have now in, in modern times, but in the 1970s, ninth grade, basically being a freshman in high school, you were still in junior high. But so, so it's going to be that year basically between eighth grade and ninth grade which was kind of our last year of being able to just be goofy kids and not really have a, a, you know, a worry in the world. And so, you know, I'm talking a world of, uh, you know, riding our banana seat bikes all over town, uh, collecting green stamps from our parents and going to the green stamp store and getting all kinds of goofy stuff. Um, We would find ditches and go down. We had a, a creek called Boggy Creek. We would tromp through it in our sneakers looking for tadpoles and salamanders and toads and all of that. And then if you followed the creek far enough, you would find an entrance into an underground drainage system where it would drain the flood water, you know, from one end of town to the other without flooding the streets. And so we would climb through those tunnels. We had one tunnel that we would get far enough in and it kind of became round and we called it Spider Tunnel and uh, spent many a summer day exploring Spider Tunnel and um, played a lot of uh, dodgeball, played a lot of dodgeball, trampoline dodgeball, and just a lot of those fun games. It was just a really cool, fun period in our life. And so, you know, and I didn't think of it at the time. You know, basically when you're living in it, you, 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 you know that it's just the coolest time ever, but you know, you get to junior high and high school and then you go off to college and you don't really think about it much. And then, then you get your first job and, and you get married and things get complicated and you got bills and, and jobs and all that stuff. And so you don't think about it, but, uh, decades later, I, uh, discovered the internet and learned how to build websites and then eventually started my own business around, built my first website in 19, 99 and it was a cartoon website but uh, I did that for a while and then around 2005 a lot of people started blogging and I thought you know what would be what would be a fun subject to blog about and that's when around 2005 is when I really kind of started getting this itch that I wanted to kind of think about and explore my old 1970s glory days and so I started a blog called CurtisTucker.com, you know, basically my name, but it was kind of a, and, and I had girls uh, by then. So I was a stay at home dad working my internet job. And part of my internet job was keeping up a lot of websites and a lot of blogs. And so, and this was a little bit before podcasting, although I, I did delve into podcasting a little bit. Um, and that was the first phase of podcasting, which didn't last very long and then faded. And now it's come back with a vengeance. But, um, so I started Curtis Tucker.com and a lot of the posts were about being a dad, a stay at home dad. Some of it was about being a, an entrepreneur, but then a lot of the posts were my memories of growing up in the 1970s. And so I blogged about that for a couple of years, uh, kept the blog up and then, you know, over time I got busy with other things and I wouldn't update it. And then eventually it kind of, uh, I think I kind of abandoned it for a while, uh, but got interested in other stuff. And then, you know, then I kind of fall in love with the movie, the movies Stand By Me and Goonies and um, Super 8, you know, those, those type of movies, uh, Lost Boys. And so I kept thinking, and then there's a movie called Now and Then, which I think is set in the really late 60s, which is a lot of girls, but I kept thinking back to the the 1970s and the group of our five friends 
that lived on West Broadway. And here's here's something kind of interesting. So I've stayed best friends with Staten, the guy that was closest to me, that we started out in sixth grade. So we're, we're still best friends today. We've stayed in touch. But then everybody else, the other three, we pretty much... So Brendan, who was also our age... Uh, sometime somewhere in junior high, he moved off to California and never moved back. And this was before the internet and all that. So we did not stay in touch with him. Uh, One of the other, the other two were two years younger than us. So by the time we left grade school and went to junior high, they entered junior high. So we were only there one year and then we were off to high school. And then by the time we got to high school, we were two years ahead of them. So we um, did not really stay, even though we were going to high school together, you know, they were younger. And so we didn't, uh, you know, just didn't hang out or communicate much. And then we all went off to college and then we really just kind of lost contact with, with each other. Uh, So what happened was uh, Brendan, our age, went off to to California and got into kind of the movie scene. He'd always, even in the 1970s, he was filming his own movies and we would be, uh, you know, we would do funny little things in his movies. And so he was taking um, writing, directing movie classes in California, learning to be a director. Um, David, one of the guys, um, he went off to the Navy, joined the Navy. And then, uh, the other guy that was younger went off to college and then he became a minister. Uh, I think, uh, I think he did, uh, some, you know, was the pastor of a church, but then I think he also did a lot of youth ministry. And so then the internet comes along and Facebook comes along and after several years, we finally uh, connected with Brendan in California, and then he's made several trips to Enid. And so we've reconnected, we've stayed friends, and then I reconnected with Jason. Um, he's actually down kind of in the Oklahoma City area. Uh, we've connected, we've done a lot of stuff together. Uh, David, I've run into, but he's the one that's still kind of standoffish. He doesn't really do uh, social media, so I've not... Uh, been in contact with him much, but so we've gotten the whole gang together and somewhere along the line, I thought it would be really cool to do a, a podcast about the 70s. So that's when I started the 70s Buzz podcast and got my uh, junior high buddy, Todd Wheeler, to do it with me. So he and I have been doing that for about four years. We're over 200 episodes and you know, some of the, one of the episodes is all about playing that game about the, the five of us hanging out, you know, doing all kinds of stuff in the summer and just everything that you can think of under the sun we have covered on the 70s Buzz podcast. But so all that led to me thinking, you know what would be really cool? And and because it's one of those deals where you're like, if you can say, how come somebody hasn't done that yet? Then there's an opportunity there. And so my opportunity is, I don't feel like anybody has done a really good um, coming of age, 1970s movie. And so I thought, you know, what would be cool is if somebody could write a screenplay and make a movie about me and my four buddies growing up on West Broadway in Enid, Oklahoma, and all of the adventures that we went on. And so this has kind of been a thing in the back of my mind for years and years and years. And uh, so finally, I've decided that probably the best way to go about this is for me to write a book about those days. Or basically, it's it's probably going to be a book about that one summer, probably the summer of 1977. And it's going to be the last year that we rode banana seat bikes and had all of that fun. And so I was trying to think of a name of what am I going to call this this book and, and finally came up with Banana Seat Squad. And I thought, okay, I don't want to write... It's not going to be a documentary and it's not going to be, it's going to be a fictional book, but it's going to be based on a lot of the things that we actually did. It's going to be set in Enid, Oklahoma, but you know, I'm going to take liberties uh, with some of the stories. I'm going to add some stories, add some things that we didn't do. And so, but it's going to basically be about five guys that grew up together in the 1970s on this, on this really cool street and all of the little adventures that they go on for this one summer. So I'm trying to figure out what, what else I can add to the mix to make it, you know, kind of fun to follow and, and put some, maybe some mystery or something fun into the story. So I'm still working on that, but I want, 
the book to get out there and people to read it and just to just to really enjoy the book and say, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Oh, I remember the Farrah Fawcett poster. I remember listening to Kiss. I remember watching the Brady Bunch reruns. I remember this and that. And just so I'm going to interject everything that I remember that was really cool about the 70s into this book. And uh, so it's not so it's going to be a fictional book, but you're, while you're reading it, you're going to be like, oh, I remember having clackers and playing jarts and almost killing my friends, you know, and just all of that really cool stuff that uh, we did and, and had back in the 70s. So I'll write the book, put the book out, and then I want to form like a real banana seat squad, but made up of kids and adults that remember riding banana seat bikes back in the day. And so I've got a logo done. We'll have t-shirts. We'll have a club. I want people to join this club. I want people to have a place where they can go together and talk about and show pictures of their banana seat bikes. So many people still have their banana seat bikes or have purchased, um, you know, banana seat bikes that have been redone, you know, for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now, I've got an interesting story I won't go into on this podcast episode because I'll probably do a whole podcast episode uh, on itself. But I basically found an exact replica of my banana seat bike, and, and it's a really cool, fun story. But I'll go into that. But uh, so anyway, I want to bring everybody together that really loves the '70s, and I thought you know what would be really cool is to write a book. So then everybody can read the book. They can become fans of the book. They can relate to the stories in the book. They can be members of the club. And then I'll have somebody turn that book into a screenplay and then the screenplay into a movie. And um, hopefully I can get all of that done before I'm long gone. If not, hopefully it'll be one of those things that gets done, um, you know, a long time. So right now, uh, so I'm recording this. Uh, in February of 2022, and right now, uh, 70s are, have made a comeback. I mean, people are wearing the old 70s clothes. Vinyl is huge right now. People are buying turntables. Vinyl is hot. All Almost all artists right now are releasing vinyl albums. Um, the Brady Bunch has come back with a vengeance on different specials. Just about everything 70s right now is really hot, so I, I'm going to miss it maybe by a little bit, but I think the people, now I'm 59, and so I think the people kind of in that range of maybe 55 to 65 are really nostalgic for the 1970s. And so I think if I can get this done within the next couple of years, you know, and get it going, get it sold, get it out there, uh, I think I'm going to hit the peak period of the people that are really wanting to remember all of that stuff from the 1970s. And like I said, I'm going to, I am going to just fill it full. Uh, I've got tons of memories and stories of, of things that went on in the 70s that I'm going to squeeze in there. So that is the plan. Um, a part of the CurtisTucker.com blog and part of this podcast will be uh, behind the scenes, a Shaggy Duck Life will be the behind the scenes of, of where I'm at, how I'm doing on writing the book. And uh, so, you know, look for future episodes or blog posts that'll be tagged with um, Banana Seat Squad. And I'll keep you guys updated. I'll, you know, uh, like I said, I don't know anything about writing a book. And so it's going to be a huge learning experience, but I think it's going to be fun trying to figure it out. Uh, if you guys have ever thought about writing a book, hopefully some of the mistakes and things that I do and make, um, I will be able to save you guys the time of making those mistakes. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've already started uh, the ideas on the book. I've got I've kind of got the ideas of what I want to happen in the book sketched out. I've got names of the characters already um, down. I've got the beginning of the book kind of the way in, in my mind, um, I, even though I haven't actually started typing it yet. But, um, you know, I've got a lot of information that I've been collecting. And so I'm basically going to write it and then I can go back and, and it's probably not going to be in the proper format. I'm probably not going to have, you know, one part is probably going to need to be put at the end of another part to add suspense or to, so there's a hero or, or, or things like that. But hopefully I'll find some people that um, are writers. I do know some writers that uh, can help me put the book together so it 
it flows like books flow. So if you're a writer out there, and I know there are some here in Enid, Oklahoma, um, I would love your help, your tips, uh, anything like that that you can give me. And uh, I will, uh, you know, I will let people know that you're the one that helped me. So uh, don't forget, you can get a hold of me at Curtis at ShaggyDuck.com. But if you've written a book, uh, let me know. I know there's a guy that back in the day when I blogged, uh, we kind of discovered each other because of our love for the 1970s. And then he ended up writing a book, but it's really, it's kind of a thin book. And it's basically just him remembering, you know, he's basically saying, Hey, I remember when I ate this certain candy and, you know, and then kind of brings up a lot. So there's really no story to it. It's just his exact memories of the 1970s. Whereas I want mine to be one of my favorite words. One of my favorite things in the whole world is adventure. And so I want to combine the 1970s with an adventure. And instead of, and, and, because I want to try to keep the whole story in Enid, Oklahoma, probably instead of it being a huge adventure, which is usually what I like, you know, I like these movies and stories that are big, long uh, adventures where they go to the jungle or the desert and they're jumping out of planes and all that stuff. I think I'm, because the characters in this story are going to be so much younger, I think it's going to be made up of a whole bunch of adventures that we go on throughout the summer. And, and I think I've written down 22. I've, you know, I've got to deal with the number 22. I like 2, 20, 22. So uh, I kind of uh, ended on 22. But I think there's going to be like 22 little adventures that we have to go on throughout the summer. And it's almost like dares that we have and goals and things that we have to accomplish to become legitimate members of the Banana Seat Squad by the end of summer. And so what I might end up doing too is incorporating some of those into uh, allowing... So so we'll have people that can buy t-shirts in the book and they'll be part of the Banana Seat Squad. But if you want to be like maybe an official or a real member of the Banana Seat Squad, there might be a couple of adventures that are on that list that you're going to have to accomplish and send to me. And then once I verify that you accomplish those, then you become an official, an official, official member with the five of us of the Banana Seat Squad. So, so basically as of right now, there's only five members of the Banana Seat Squad and it's me, Staten, David, Jason, and Brendan. And I don't think I'm going to use our names in the book. I, I've got fun nicknames that that uh, I think are going to be funner. And that way, you know, and, and what's going to happen is later down the road, you know, Todd came into the picture and there was other, Bruce Bradley came into the picture. So there was a lot of other people that came in after that summer of 77, but they were part of the gang. And so there's some things that happen maybe in 78 or 79 with those guys, and then maybe not so much with one of the members of the five. So that's where I'm going to take liberties where there might be a story that actually we we did with Todd, but so there's going to maybe be a character that's kind of a combination of David and Todd. And so some of the stories are going to be bits of what we did with David and bits of what we would, did with Todd. And so it's not going to be an exact true story, but it's going to be things we did. And then I'm going to exaggerate some of the stories. I mean, there's some things that I look back and I'm like, man, I wish we had done that, you know, which at the time we did, our parents would have killed us had we done. But in a book, I can get away with that stuff. And so that's what's going to be so cool about the book is uh, going on these adventures and doing the things that I really wish we had been able to do in the 1970s, although we did do a lot of stuff. And doing the the 70s Buzz podcast, what I, and, I, and Todd agrees with me, what I've come to realize, I think, is 1977 was probably the best year out of the 70s. And a lot of it has to do with the music that came out that year, but there was some a lot of really great movies that came out that year. And I'm going to try to incorporate you know, all of that stuff uh, into the movie. You know, the biggest thing about the movie would be to have an official 70s soundtrack. Um, but, you know, it depends on if there's backing 
to pay for all that. But um, I do have a buddy and do have other buddies. Um, we're gonna ha- I'm going to have them, and they're fans of the 1970s as well. So eventually I will have them write, you know, probably a song, maybe an opening song or an ending song, uh, 1970s style song for the movie. And so that's going to be cool. Uh, I'm going to try to get as many people that have helped me along the way into writing this and helping with whatever we, we get accomplished. So um, if any of this sounds interesting to you and you're a director or a writer, uh, get a hold of me and maybe we can talk. Now, you know, the cool thing is that Brendan is a writer and a director. So uh, once I get the book done, you know, I'll be able to present it to him. And, you know, he may be the guy that's going to write the screenplay because basically he's in he's in the book. Uh, and then he's got connections. Uh, there, we've got several connections uh, from Enid in Hollywood. And so, but I think it would be cool to start to get this going. And that's why I've got the Banana Seat Squad name out there and the logo out there because I want to start, uh, you know, creating some buzz about this story. And the people that listen to our 70s Buzz podcast are already like, hey, where are you on the story? I can't wait to read it and and this and that. And that's what I'm trying to, you know, create this buzz and this, this uh, you know, feeling of, hey, we want this to come out soon. But uh, it would be nice to start getting some ducks in the row on a screenplay writer, uh, a director, you know, some other things like that, get some things out of the way. So, um, you know, I guess the biggest hurdle is just getting uh, me, Curtis Tucker, to write the darn book. And uh, hopefully I'm going to, you know, this has been the year, 2022 uh, has been the year of kind of refocusing uh, squishing things down. I got rid of that buzz guy and, and I've gone to just Shaggy Duck. And uh, so now my nickname is Shags. And so anyway, uh, you know, under under Shaggy Duck Studio is Banana Seat Squad and, and all these other little businesses. But I'm just trying to cut down on the number of uh, social media accounts, the number of things that I have to update so I can save a little more time and do a little more writing. I think once I get to start really get heavy into writing the book. I think I'll stick with it and it'll go faster, Um, you know, especially in the summer. And I've thought about this for the last two summers. uh, And I do a lot of walking and a lot of listening to podcasts and music. And, you know, the the coolest thing is to go out on a hundred degree day and walk for five miles listening to only songs from the 1970s because it brings back so many memories and it just, you know, thought after thought after thought, I'm like, well, I got to add that to the book. I've got to add that to the book. And so, um, you know, it's kind of easy to, for me to get the inspiration, but I am 59 and uh, my memory is not quite as good as it used to be. So I've got to get this stuff written down. I've got to get it on there. Uh, this is also going to be a great a book for my kids and my grandkids because it is going to be based so much on living in Enid, Oklahoma and the things, you know, things that I did, you know, I might not have done them exactly the way they are in the book, but it's based on something that me and my buddies had done. So um, I'm trying to think of uh, some of the tasks, but off the top of my head, I can't I uh, can't really think of, of any of them. Maybe I don't want to spoil it. But eventually, so what I'll probably do is once I get it going, I'll probably write, once I get like maybe the first, either first chapter or like the first 10 pages written, I will release that and post that at curtistucker.com. You can also, if you go to shaggyduck.com, it forwards you to curtistucker.com. Again, I'm trying to take all of the different websites that I've been trying to keep up with and trying to update. I'm trying to squeeze them all into one website, which is curtistucker.com. And so uh, I think eventually if you go to 70s Buzz podcast, it will throw you to curtistucker.com. If you go to shaggyduck.com, it'll throw you to curtistucker.com. And then uh, probably eventually if you go to, I I do have bananaseatsquad.com. If you go to Banana Seat Squad, I'm going to want that to probably throw you to curtistucker.com. And that way I'll have only one website, one blog that I have to update, but I'll just divide it into different categories. And I think by now people understand how to search and find, you know, so you can click on the 70s category right now and every blog post that I've done that has something associated with the 70s will pop up. Whereas maybe 
a blog post about um, Shaggy Duck Studio doesn't pop up because it may be about being an entrepreneur or something. And that's the kind of stuff I was doing in the past when I was that buzz guy. So again, I'm getting away from that buzz guy, which was teaching you guys how to do podcasts and SEO and website building and marketing yourself and being an entrepreneur. I think I've gotten that out of my system. And all those episodes are still on a Shaggy Duck Life. They're they're like season one or two, probably, I think season two is what I call them. And so they're kind of in a group there. So if you want to get some tips on on building stuff and being an entrepreneur, go listen to those episodes. Um, but, but what I did was I got rid of that buzz guy and those type of episodes. And now it's a shaggy duck life, which is basically just me sitting here spewing and uh, talking about what's going on behind the scenes. And so what's going on behind the scenes of shaggy duck studio right now is I'm preparing to write this book. I'm still trying to figure out the exact art I'm going to be doing as shags. And so uh, I will have a line of art coming out. I may do some NFTs. Uh, I'm going to try to get into a lot of other stuff. My my full-time business still is Enid Buzz, so I'm still doing that. But um, just looking for some other things to do. So it's not just that all the time. Uh, Back in the day, before I was doing Ena Buzz full time, you know, I could I would wake up and one, you know, some days I'd be drawing cartoons, some days I'd be blogging, you know, some days I'd be, you know, doing things on YouTube. So, and I also would love you guys to subscribe on YouTube. I'd like to build up and do more videos on YouTube. I know right now it's just kind of boring. It's just me talking to the camera, but hopefully uh, if this gets gets going and I get some more followers, I think I'm up to 481 subscribers, which in the scheme of things is not many, but it's 481 people. I mean, thank you, all of you 481 people for subscribing to me on YouTube. Uh, I greatly appreciate you guys checking out the episodes. I know they're not as informative as they once were, and now they're just more of a kind of a journal. But um, hopefully, uh, just being a journal, it's going to help you guys learn what it's like to run a business, be an entrepreneur, and still do those behind the scene things. So, you know, you're going to learn how to get some art going. You're going to learn how to write a book, hopefully how to make a movie. Um, I'm still working on the Shaggy Duck brand where I'm going to have clothing. And uh, I've already got, um, I'm going to hold this up. So if you're listening to the podcast right now, I'm holding up the, the first Shaggy Duck sticker. It's kind of a chrome looking round Shaggy Duck sticker. I, I changed the logo Um, I've had several Shaggy Duck logos over the years, and then I finally decided, you know what? If I'm going all in on the Shaggy Duck in the 70s thing, I think the Shaggy Duck logo needs to look like a 70s logo. And so I've always loved these really uh, fat-bottomed letters from the 1970s, and then I like the way people shape them either into the shape of a heart or a circle. And so that's what I did. I took Shaggy Duck... I kind of made my own font. It was a font from the 70s, and then I had to adjust it quite a bit. And then I squeezed the word Shaggy Duck into a circle. And so the words above the Shaggy Duck logo say, Groovy Life, Good Vibes, Far Out Stuff. And that's all from the 70s. And the bottom says, Uniquely Less Ordinary. And that's the Shaggy Duck brand. That's going to be the brand. So a lot of the clothing, there's going to be tie-dye. A lot of the clothing and the T-shirt designs are going to be basically things from the 70s. You know, it's going to be a line of uh, T-shirts and sayings and things from the 70s because I'm really getting into, I've I've been buying corduroys, corduroy shorts, um, terry cloth shirts, a lot of uh, T-shirts with 70s stuff on them. And so, like I said, the 1970s are coming back full bore and you can get all kinds of stuff from the 1970s now. So uh, what I've collected in Shaggy Duck Studio in just the last few months is I've got a lava lamp in here. Todd got me a troll doll. Um, One of our listeners got me a Scooby-Doo really cool radio and light. I've got that in here. I've got my Farrah Fawcett poster framed and on the wall in here. I've got Scooby-Doo over there. Uh, I've got a surfboard in here. What else have I added? Uh, I've got a Tribble that I got from Hallmark. Uh, you squeeze it and it actually works. I got a Rubik cube over there, and so uh, I've got it, my brand new turntable. I've been collecting more albums. Yeah, I may have more albums at this point 
than I did when I had albums and then sold all of them at a garage sale, which I'm warning you, don't go selling your really cool stuff at garage sales just because you don't want to move it because eventually it may come back and you're going to be kicking yourself for getting rid of that stuff. Uh, what else do I have in here? Oh, I've got my mom's. Uh, she took a whole bunch of glass, black glass ashtrays from Las Vegas casinos in the 70s. And so I've got those scattered around the studio. And so I've got uh, yellow shag carpet in here and mid-century modern furniture and, and stuff like that. So anyway, so my studio is basically turning into a really cool vibe of, of the 70s. I've got beads on the doorway between the actual studio and kind of a work area that I've got. And so I just keep adding and adding uh, more and more of a 70s vibe to the studio. So if you guys are ever in the area in Enid, Oklahoma, uh, give me a holler. I invite you to come see the studio, come hang out with me. I will make you a Harvey Wallbanger, uh, one of the coolest sounding drinks from the 1970s. I do have all of the stuff in the house that I can make you a Harvey Wallbanger. One of these days, I'll probably have a big... Um, ribbon cutting or open house here at the studio and, and I'll make a bunch of those. But uh, so anyway, I think I've kind of covered uh, everything. Um, you know, Shaggy Duck, all of that. I, I think I explained that in a prior episode of basically kind of comes from Shaggy on Scooby-Doo and then Duck. I was just trying to think of a really creative name for my graphic design company, Um I think in 2005 is when I came up with Shaggy Duck. And so I've had the name, I've had the domain name for quite a while. And it's actually my corporate business. So even when I bill people for um, advertising on Enid Buzz, uh, it's billed through Shaggy Duck. So people pay Shaggy Duck Studio. So it's it's always been my company name. And then I kind of got away from it, uh, even though I was still using it as far as banking. And then I thought, you know, why am I not using... Shaggy Duck. It just, it fits with the 70s vibe. The name Shags. Um, I think I've, I've, here's a picture. I, um, if you're not watching this on YouTube, please go check out the video on Curtis Tucker TV YouTube and, and see what I'm holding up. But here, so if you look at me now, um, I've got a hat on, but uh, as you, most of you know, I'm bald now. I lost my hair probably around the age of 24, but I like calling myself Shags because that's going to be my artist name. Uh, and you're probably wondering, well, why, why would you call yourself shags? You, you, you don't look like a shaggy looking guy, but this picture right here, um, I'm not ex exactly the year, uh, anywhere from 74 to 76, probably. Um, I do have a full head of shaggy hair. And so, so I actually, at one time I was shags in reality. And so I just got my, um, yesterday, I believe I just got my new license plate, for my Jeep called Shags. And so now I'm going to strip off all of the uh, That Buzz Guy logos and I'm going to be adding uh, Shaggy Duck logos and probably probably still keep it a little bit Enid Buzz, have some Enid Buzz on there. Uh, but anyway, um, also I am going to have a release. So I have released the logo. I don't have it in front of me because I don't have it printed on anything of the... Um, Banana Seat Squad. So you can go to my Facebook page or my Instagram account. And if you scroll down, you'll find uh, the Banana Seat Squad logo. It's really cool. It's got a banana seat bike kind of looking from the back and then some really cool funky lettering. But here pretty quick, I will have a sticker with that logo that you guys can put on your vehicles or your windows. And then also... Um, that will be one of the first t-shirts that I do, which will be under the Shaggy Duck brand. And so a t-shirt from the Shaggy Duck brand will be Banana Seat Squad. And uh, I love the logo. I, I probably could have done it, um, but I kind of wanted... There's this guy that used to, a cartoonist that lived in Enid, moved away, and he does a lot of rat rod, um, rat... Um, I can't think of the rat what they call it, but the old cartoons with the rat in the hot rods, he does that kind of cartooning. And he had done a design for a guy on a banana seat bike. And once I saw that design on Facebook, I was like, okay, I got to get this guy to do my banana seat bike. And then I'll do the lettering and put it all together and color it. And so I hired him to actually draw uh, the banana seat bike and he did a great job. Um, 
and uh, so his name's Jay, and I think I've got him highlighted on the post that shows the logo. But anyway, that uh, t-shirt design will be available soon, so you can have an official Banana Seat Squad t-shirt, but until I figure out how to get you guys to become official members of the Banana Seat Squad, you won't be an official member of the five of us until I figure that out and you guys go on those adventures yourself. So be looking forward to all of that. Um, let me think of anything else um, that I can think of. You know, so so growing up in Enid, Oklahoma, uh, we just had a, an episode on um, the 70s Buzz podcast. They filmed the movie Dillinger in 1972 in Enid, Oklahoma. And then I believe it was 1973, Richard Nixon came to uh, Vance Air Force Base, which is part of Enid. And I went out and got to see him, his Air Force One land and watched him talk to the, you know, to the crowd. Um, what else have we had? I mean, you know, some really cool things in the 70s in Enid, Oklahoma. And uh, so anyway, I'll just, I'll kind of incorporate those into the Banana Seat Squad. But, you know, again, that was, that's my love of the 1970s. And luckily I have kept uh, some stuff. I've got a cassette tape and I believe it is from 1974, my first cassette tape that came with my cassette player, and I've kept it all these years, and so I digitized that. I will I will do an episode on this podcast and play those clips for you, although I've already we already did an episode on the 70s Buzz podcast, but I'll have those over there, and you guys can listen to that. So anyway, uh, if you're a fan of the 70s as much as I am, I think you're going to enjoy to keep listening to A Shaggy Duck Life because the 70s will be brought up all the time, and uh, I'll keep you guys uh, informed. If you haven't seen Ghostbusters Afterlife, it's it's got kind of a cool vibe to it of how I want my movie to be. Uh, young kids going on adventures, chasing, you know, I'm not going to be chasing ghosts, but uh, highly recommend seeing Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, it's really cool. Oh, man. Um, if you're watching the podcast, um, I'm going to stop right here and uh, tell you guys goodbye. I think my audacity just uh, probably just a minute or two ago kaputed out on me, so I'm going to have to figure out how to get the actual audio podcast going again. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, sorry about that, but uh, thank you guys for checking in. Don't forget, you guys can hit me up at curtis at shaggy duck.com and go to Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube. Please subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting app and I'm going to get out of here. So see ya.